In this video, in the one to follow, we're going to go over some important new improvements and additions to the Pose tool in 3D Code. In this first video, we're going to cover freeform deformation lattices inside the Pose tool and go over one of the new improvements or one of the new features that allows you more control over the deformation curve. Okay. The next video will look at creating bevels with the Pose tool you can create new curves that will allow you to make some very intricate type of bevels and extrusions. We'll also touch on a few other tools as well for this very purpose. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to unhide this character and go back to our front view. We will go to the adjust section of the tool panel and choose the pose tool. Over here in our tool options panel, and choose the selection type here and I'll choose select with pin over in our E panel I want to make sure and uncheck ignore back faces because I want to be able to select all the way through the model okay and in this case I'll probably use polygonal lasso I'll zoom out a little bit and what I want to do is select the entire arm all the way up into the shoulder region to demonstrate how you might use it for posing purposes. So let me first make sure that I have symmetry turned on. Once you have the selection made you can smooth the edges of the selection here and it's usually pretty gradual and so if we want uh, more of a smoothing type of effect then I can hit the E key to bring the E panel directly to me and I'll choose a brush hold the shift key and now I can smooth it we'll kind of spread that gradient in this shoulder area where I want a bit smoother deformation I'm going to reduce the brush size come down here and I don't need as much deformation so I don't I don't have to create such a large fall off okay so let's go to the back view by hitting the A key on the number pan Increase my brush size here. Okay, go back to a front view, we'll go to a top view here, I think the larger the muscle, probably the, larger, the softer the fall off we want it to be. With that done, I like what I have. Now, instead of um, having to reselect this later on, let's say, for example, if I wanted to make some modifications to the legs after I've worked on the arms for a little while, before the ability to save the selection, obviously you had to come back and reselect and go through all this again. So that can be tedious to have to repeat over and over again. So you can save your selection. Okay, 
and let's clear it. And so let's say after you've worked in another area, you want to come back, you can reload that selection. And voila. Okay. So if I were wanting to rotate just the entire arm, then uh, this standard gizmo should work just fine. I don't really need a freeform lattice for this purpose. So let me click on the little handle here and it will change the transform mode to rotate. Rotate it out a bit. And if we want, we can rotate the arms inward or outward. And I wanted to show how you can use the freeform deformation cage to make multiple modifications without having to select and reselect and, and all that. Okay, if I were wanting to uh, pose the elbow or you know, reposition it, re rotate the forearm forward or or whatnot, I would have to make another selection like this and then make the modification. And then if I wanted to adjust the wrist area, again, I'd have to make another selection that too can be a little bit tedious. So why not use the freeform deformation cage to be able to quickly select the areas that we want to work on and, and modify. So let's click use freeform and you may be wondering, uh, okay, uh, where's my cage? I don't see it. Well, that's because it always comes out at the origin of the grid. Okay, and by default you might have something like this. Let's choose four by four and we'll choose fit. And should it be a primitive of some sort uh, or a very simple object, typically this fit will work very well, but for something like a limb where you have you know, a lot of appendages and so on, it might be a bit too confusing uh, for it to get the orientation completely correct. So let me adjust it here by checking transform the entire lattice. Okay, and I'll scale it in. And I probably want to have one of these loops, okay, of all these control points, probably want to have one in the elbow region and one in the wrist region if I can. I don't plan on rotating the shoulder anymore or from the shoulder so the only thing I'm concerned with is the elbow and the wrist area. So I don't really have to have this cage extend this far up if I don't want. So that looks pretty close. I'm going to rotate it a little bit so that this this row here is in line uh, with the bones in the wrist. Okay. Looks close enough, so I'll uncheck transform whole lattice. Now I'll hit the E key to select the freeform lasso. And now I can select just the points I want to work with. And by default, it will place the gizmo at the center of the selection. However, in this case, I wanted to change the center rotation uh, to be here at the wrist. So let's hold the shift key, which will essentially enable this option right here, move on the gizmo. Instead of having to check this and come back and uncheck it, holding the shift key allows me to do this on the fly. So I can just hold the shift key and move it in place. Go to another view to double check that. Looks fine. Okay, so we are essentially ready to go. Let me make one more small change. Okay, so again, we're now ready to go and this new feature is freeform deformation strictness. And what this means is 3D Coat has an invisible falloff curve between the last selected points 
and the next group of non-selected points. So between these points and these points, there's going to be a falloff curve. Right? And at zero, which is what you would have had previously, you would see something like this. Okay, and that's really not what I want. It's causing too much deformation here. Right? And uh, Andrew changed the algorithm towards a little bit more uniform, a little, a little bit more predictable. But again, with too much of a fall off curve, uh, this is really not what I want. In some modeling uh, settings, this might be what you want, but in this case, it's not. So. What we need to do is restrict that fall off curve. We need to dial it back quite a bit. So let's go all the way up to, let's go to one. Okay. And that's more like what I want. So let me undo that. And you can even go above this and go 1.5 numerically and so it's very strict All right, so now what we want to do is select all the way up to the elbow. And I'm going to reposition by holding the shift key. Reposition this gizmo once more. And place it right in the joint area. So let's go all the way back to zero again. And once more, you can see how it's affecting the model in this area a bit too much. So I'll undo. And let's try 1.2. And that looks good to go. Okay. So let me finish this up by unchecking freeform, clear the selection, and there we have it. Our newly posed character. Okay, so in the next video, again, we are going to look at creating bevels with the Pose tool. Stay tuned, and thank you for watching.